Hey guys, Angry Beast here bringing you some Call of Duty 2 gameplay. Yes, you saw this right. This is the classic. This is Call of Duty 2. Um, this is a 1v1 that I had playing against a guy. I think his name is Food Poisoning or something like that. And it's a free-for-all 1v1. Standard uh, COD 2 rules. Any weapons, any map, you know, whatever. But I want to talk about this game and how Call of Duty has evolved. Um, this game was the most basic of all the Call of Duties. Uh, all it had was guns, frags, and that's about it. It had guns and frags in multiplayer. Uh, you could jump and you could crouch, and but beyond that, there was no kill streaks, there was no ranking up, there was no unlocked weapons. You choose what weapon you want at any time. And it was just a lot of fun because everybody was on an even playing field. If I wanted to use a sniper rifle, I could switch it out, out to it at any point. I didn't have a limit on how many classes I could have. I could switch my team at any time. Unless uh, it was a team death match, but I just miss the simplicity of this Call of Duty. Uh, that's why I go back to it every once in a while, and I just find it fun to go around with a weapon like the trench gun in a in a free for all setting and just kill people with it. Unfortunately, though, I do switch up to a sniper halfway through the game because it's very difficult to use a shotgun against a sniper in this game. All the shotguns are extremely powerful. They are also very very situational. I die a couple times off the bat here, but there really wasn't too much I could do about it. The number one defense in this game against a shotgunner was just to stay in the middle of the map where I couldn't get a line of sight onto him and rely on sounds and uh, sounds on the radar. But right there, that just shows the power of the shotgun. I turned around and I just shot at him through a freaking tank and it still killed him. That's what the shotgun was good at in this game and I missed that. The shotgun, I think, did 50 to 5 damage and it had infinite range. So this thing could kill out to monsters of a distance in one shot. But unfortunately, the damage does drop rather quick, but... You know, it's what you get. I also, one of the things I miss about this game is the simplicity of the objective game modes. I think in this game there were headquarters and search and destroy. That was it for objective game modes. If you want to play anything else, you couldn't. Um, it was team deathmatch free for all, headquarters. Maybe there was CTF, and uh, I know there was search and destroy. This was the game that really revolutionized COD for a lot of people. It was the first game that a lot of people played because it shipped with the Xbox. I think that was cool. I think it was a good thing that COD was able to get out on the release of the Xbox with Call of Duty 2. A lot of people say Call of Duty 4 was the first Call of Duty that really got it big, but I disagree. I say that Call of Duty 2 kicked it big because this was the first Call of Duty I'd played. I hadn't heard of Call of Duty before this, and it's a really fun game. Um, it's addictive. Uh, one thing, though, that you cannot do is you cannot sprint, and there is no uh, no uh, UAVs, killstreaks, stuff like that. But it has a lot of the basic stuff, like uh, being able to jump. A lot of first-person shooters didn't have that capability at this time. Being able to uh, pull out binoculars, which no other Call of Duty except Call of Duty 3 had. <laughs> but who played Call of Duty 3? That game was a piece of crap anyway. Um, uh, it just had some things that made it a really fun first-person shooter. Uh, one thing, though, that really took away from this game was how powerful the sniper rifles were. Um, nobody's going to die an eye in this game because the snipers are extremely powerful. You can get a one-hit kill with a sniper pretty much anywhere on the body except for the toe. And, and that can be frustrating at times. I mean, I don't deserve to die when I get shot in the toe with a sniper rifle bullet. But it, this game had some things also that made it frustrating. Another the fact is, is that the sniper, a sniper kit spawned with three grenades instead of one or two. Uh, in this game, the grenades work. You, you had a certain number of grenades, depending on which class you could get, up to three with sniper rifles. And uh, So, uh, you traded some things for other things. You traded grenades for uh, weapon uh, capability up close, pretty much. And right here, I switch up to the sniper rifle. And you'll see from my first couple kills with this, that this weapon can absolutely destroy people. I do have a pretty big, big deficit right now, but I do end up coming back for the win. I mean, it isn't too hard to get that many kills in a Call of Duty. Oh, look at that. The headshot symbol is still exactly the same. That's what's awesome. So some of the basic things about Call of Duty haven't changed, and that's what makes it such a great game. Um, this also had a different type of melee. You didn't pull out a knife unless you were using a pistol, I believe. And you could simply bash them with your gun, and that was cool. It added a different dynamic to the game that I don't think any other Call of Duty has, and... It just made it cool in a way that I don't think any other game has. And if, if they do go back to the World War II setting, I'd love to see just a simple remake of this game. A lot of people say, oh, it's boring, there's no kill streaks, there's no sprinting. But no, it's a lot of fun. I, it's all about the kills. It was an older style first person shooter. Uh, it, it didn't have the performance that the current, days ha the current games have. And I think it plays at about only 30 frames per second, even on the Xbox. So it doesn't have the best performance compared to... You can notice a lot of frame dropping compared to, like, World at War or 
uh, COD 4, but it's still a lot of fun to play. Regardless of all its flaws with the sniper rifles and the grenades, it's a game that is really, really has a lot of replay value. Because of the fact that you can do pretty much anything in this game. There is no limitations on what's good and what's bad. If you want to use it, you can go out and use it. There's no stat tracking that I'm aware of. If you don't go into the in the competitive playlist, which nobody plays anymore. So there's no stat tracking, so you have to, don't have to worry about your kill-death ratio or any of that. And it just made the game a lot more casual and a lot more fun. While I do agree with the fact that there should be at least some record of KD in Call of Duty, I don't think it should be the overall stat that's referred to. See, I shot that guy in the knee and he died, but it shouldn't be the <laughs> the only uh, stat that is uh, held to as how good you are. I think it should be how good you are based on how many games you win in a free-for-all or kills-based setup showing how good you are to slay. Because guess what? Free-for-all shows more about how well of a player you are than a, than a domination as far as kills go. Because there's a lot more going on and it takes a lot more skill to win, in my opinion. At least from just a kill standpoint. In Domination, I can sit back and I can pick off people who rush the flags while I sit back with my sniper rifle in the corner of the map. But in this game, there is none of that. You can't do that. You have to basically kill to get the win, and you can't just sit in the corner. You have to move around and find your target if you're losing, which I am right here. So, that's what I liked about this game, and I hope Call of Duty returns to this, this level of simplicity eventually. Um... Now, in this game, there were quite a few things that were broken, like I've said, but one of the things that wasn't broken was the automatic weapons. I think they balanced the automatics pretty well in this game. You had the MP40, which, oh my god, MP40, World at War, terrible. Uh, but that that wasn't the only MP40 that there was in Call of Duty history. In this game, the MP40 was good. It had, did like a two or three hit kill up close, but it had bad range, and it had a lot more recoil than what it currently does with the World of War MP40. So I think they balanced it quite well there. Um, you have the SGG44, which has a lot of recoil, and it goes, does pretty good damage. I think they balanced the recoil and the damage pretty well in this game. I don't think any of the Call of Duty has really encapsulated that feel of a lot of recoil with a lot of damage. And just the fact that you can pretty much one-hit headshot with any weapon in the game is another good thing. It rewards accuracy. I can go around with a pistol and I can kill lots and lots of people if I can consistently get headshots. Now unfortunately, and it's very difficult to get a headshot in this game because of how the hit detection works, but if I need to, I can switch to my pistol and be and actually get a one hit kill. I'm right here just want to point out what I'm doing. I'm listening for this guy. Back in Call of Duty 2, Guess what? You could still sound whore, and that's a great thing. So many things have not changed about Call of Duty, and I just hope that they don't in the future. Uh, changing in Call of Duty is something that a lot of people want. I see people wanting, oh, move to the future, new futuristic weapons. But this is what Call of Duty is. Call of Duty is a game that's meant for casual, fun gameplay like this. Uh, we're not playing competitively here. I'm just running around trying to kill him, and you can know I'm not playing competitively because I start off with the worst gun in the game, the freaking trench gun. Uh, like I said, the hit detection is off there. I shot him right in the head, but it didn't work because there is no bullet penetration in this game. And that's one thing that's okay, not okay. I don't really care about bullet penetration, but the simplicity of this game is amazingly refreshing. Um, if you're having a, a hard time playing Modern Warfare 3 for whatever reason, or you're just tired of Call of Duty in general, go back to this game. Invite me to a 1v1 on this game. You can be sure that I'll hop in and I'll play with you. No matter how good or bad I do, I just have a fun time. Just make sure you have a mic and I can talk to you while you're doing that because this game just has a lot of features that make me want to come back to it i mean world of war has, is the same way the whole world war ii uh, era is something that i just love i think it's one of the coolest parts in history not from the fact that there was world war ii and that's a horrible thing but just so much was going on at the time there's so much you can learn from mistakes made by men in the past and the triumphs you can learn so much from this period of time i just think that the games that are stationed in this area have a really good appeal to me i mean the weapons mean something this lee enfield killed millions of germans with it uh, and it just is a unique feeling that I personally love. What's your opinion on the older Call of Duty games, like the World War II, the Call of Duty 2s, and the and the Call of Duty 1s? I mean, personally, I think they're the best in the series. Uh, now, arguably, Call of Duty 4 is the best because it revolutionized a lot of stuff. And uh, World of War was pretty good before it got hacked. But I think that this game is probably one of the best. I mean, it had a lot of features. Look at this. I'm crosswalking here. And when you crosswalk in this game, you reduce your footstep noise. It's that simple. And I do the exact same thing in Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2. All the other Call of Duties have the same exact feature. You crouch walk and you remove your footstep noise. And... So much, so little has changed throughout Call of Duty. I think people need to keep in perspective. They're like, oh my god, Tipnet 5 OP. Well, there's always been an OP weapon. It's not like every other game hasn't had an OP weapon. Think about it. In, uh, 
in World of War, you had the MP40. In COD 4, you had the M16 and MP5. And, uh, shoot, what was that? In Modern Warfare 2, you had the grenade launchers. In Black Ops, you had the FAMAS. And in Modern Warfare 3, you have the Type 95. But this game has its overpowered weapons as well. I mean, the snipers are ridiculously OP in this game. Oh, and at this point, I'm, I've pretty much won. He switched up to a MG, and in a 1v1 scenario, when you switch up to an MG, you basically said, okay, I lose. But I do kill him a couple more times here at the end, just for good measure. Uh, the game does end by uh, me having to quit because the family timer pops up, which is unfortunate, but you know what happens. And uh, if you notice there, I missed the no-scope. And that's one of the things that this game also did well. If you were standing completely still, you could hit a no-scope almost every freaking time. But if you're moving even the slightest, your crosshairs go really, really large. And that's a very good thing. And I, I miss that. I, and just the fact that it was so easy to do certain things are considered beast mode now. Like, it's so easy to get a quick scope in this game because the snippers are always a one-hit kill pretty much wherever you hit them. And it just ends up with this game being one of those things where... It's got good historical value, but as a balanced Call of Duty, I think this was one of the worst. But it is my favorite. It is one of my favorites because of the historical feel of it. Now, don't, I'm not going to lie. This game doesn't have that many players on it at any time. So if you're going to buy it, then probably don't buy it for multiplayer because you're lucky to find 10 to 15 people online at a time because it's just an older game and there aren't too many people who play it anymore but it was one of the most bought call of duty games for its time and the fact that it shipped with the xbox is what kicked off the call of duty franchise and i hope that call of duty gets kickstarted again by a game that ships with a new xbox coming in 2013 but I'm, I'm gonna end the gameplay pretty soon here after i think i pistol with this guy one or t once or twice because i just want to show that the pistols can get one hit kills as well because you know that's what this game had right the ability to one hit kill with any weapon is important if every weapon can one hit kill you can't call any weapon op um every weapon has the exact same time to kill if every weapon can kill in one shot and there's no nothing as, as far as overpower goes i mean it's just that this game had a lot of things that I really love, and I, I can't stress that enough. I'd say that if if you were to get, if you want to play this game with me, just send me a message on Xbox Live. But other than that, I'm Angry Beast, and I'm signing out, and I will catch you guys in my next video.